the next speaker is Abiz Erdalat from the campaign against sanctions and military intervention in Iran, pointing out the dangers, what the sanctions are doing, but above all, what the dangers are for everybody in Iran should the West be so stupid as to start a war against Iran. Please give a very warm welcome to Abbas. So last month in Istanbul, the P5 plus 1, the permanent members of the U.S. Security Council plus Germany, were having negotiations with Iran on the nuclear issue. And at the end of the negotiations, Catherine Ashton, representing the group of P plus 5 plus 1, announced that the negotiations were positive and constructive. For the first time in some seven years, the West has said through its representative that the negotiations were positive. But increasingly it's become clear that the West is not negotiating with Iran in good faith. Just look at what happened last week. First, the U.S. ambassador in Israel said publicly that the U.S. is ready to attack Iran. On Thursday, the, the U.S. Congress overwhelmingly passed a resolution which rejects any effort to rely on any means to contain a nuclear capable Iran, not a nuclear armed Iran, a nuclear capable Iran, thus decreasing the threshold of a military attack by the United States because a nuclear capable Iran can be interpreted in any way you want. You can say because Iran is able to enrich uranium up to 20% for civilian purposes, is already nuclear capable. And therefore, this justifies a military attack on behalf of the United States. And yesterday, the House was due to pass another resolution, which is the National Defense Authorization Act of 2013, which even lowers the threshold even further. It says that the United States has to visibly prepare itself to attack Iran, visibly prepare itself to attack Iran. And it says that the United States should prevent Iran through every means, including military intervention, from threatening the United States or its allies or its neighbors, not mentioning nuclear weapons at all. So the threshold has been lowered to allow the United States to attack Iran at any time they wish, without any pretext at all. Because you can always say that mere existence of the Islamic Republic of Iran is a threat to the US interests. So this is what the United States is now doing. They are negotiating in bad faith with Iran. So the next round of negotiations is in Baghdad, just f in five, five days' time. And we will see what the outcome th of that will be. But the Congress has set the stage, the U.S. Congress has set the stage for another illegal criminal war under a false pretext, as they did nine years ago, by saying that the Iraqis we're having weapons of mass destruction which never existed, they are now doing the same thing, the same cri criminal illegal war, this time against Iran. And let's not forget that this is not the first time that they are following this hawkish policy against Iran. Sixty years ago today, the United Kingdom, with the support of the United States, imposed an oil embargo on the democratically elected government of Dr. Mossadegh which is exactly what they are doing now against the Islamic Republic. When that weakened Iran economically, they organized the 1953 coup against the, the, Dr. Mossadegh's government and brought in the hated Shah. So what message should be learned from history? The message is that we British people, we are responsible for the oil embargo that the UK, together with its European allies, and the United States have imposed on Iran. If this oil embargo is not removed, this will be a prelude to a military attack on Iran for a regime change. So remove all sanctions against Iran, remove the oil embargo, which is an 
act of war, which is an economic warfare.